Okay, Cohen. All right, so again, today we're gonna walk through uh, setting up a recruiting campaign and really some different options that you have in there as well. So we'll go from beginning to end, walking through that process, as well as showing you some options once you're done, how you send out the email blast, how you can recruit people by phone, how the quotas work, etc. So let's go ahead and start. So I'm just gonna click edit from my dashboard here. I already set up a project so that we can walk through. Now you'll see in this case, I'm doing an on-site test. You can recruit for online packing slip and online emails as well. And I'll point out a couple of differences that we have there. I've set this up for assisted check-in, uh, but you can also do self-check-in. Assisted check-in means when the person comes in, you're gonna say, hey, Steve, thanks for coming in. In this case, I'm gonna do assisted check-in, which requires me to actually check the individual in to my test, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead here, I'm gonna click next. My next step is my participants, and I've actually gone ahead, I'm gonna do something a little more complicated here. I'm gonna go ahead and create two participant groups, a male participant group and a female participant group. Let's say that um, you expect that there might be a difference between gender for your test and you want to make sure that first position is balanced for males and females. You can do that uh, using these participant groups and I'll show you how you can actually then select the demographic once it exists to automatically assign the person to the correct participant group here so they're assigned the correct number. I'll show you that as well. We're going to click next. We have our test scheduled for today and you'll see that it shows up on the 23rd. Because I'm doing an on-site test, I have session times. That means that the person will be able to choose which session they want to come to. Um, so they can come at the 715 session, 830 session, 930 session, so on and so forth. They'll be able to choose their session time. The number of seats limits the number of people that can come to any one session. So if you are a one of our consumer packaged goods clients, this can help with your test flow so that you don't get everybody coming in at once. Let's go ahead and click next. Our next step is to create our campaign. Now I haven't started this so that I can walk you through setting up all of the different steps. So I'm gonna go ahead in recruiting and I'm gonna click this create campaign button. And this is going to take me, you'll see that my URL changes into recruiting. So now I'm at recruiting.regj.net. And here, the first thing that's going to happen is I'm gonna set up some details about this specific campaign, right? And so the question pops up automatically, would you like to exclude subjects from locations other than the San Francisco site? So in my database, I have a total of 2,300 people, give or take, it'll tell me the exact number, 2,330 people. And I can easily look at filters and show how many people I have in each location. So for example, in my San Francisco location, I have 1,170 subjects. Now what I wouldn't wanna do is say no and try to recruit people for an on-site test to come in from Chicago, right? So managing those locations is key here, and also understanding what this means is key. And I'll show you where that shows up in just a second. We can name our campaign, we'll just call this webinar. You can add a description if you want to. Make the campaign accessible from the subject portal. So if you check this box, a couple of things happen. One is your subjects, if you have given them portal access, have access to a site called my.regj.net. And from there, they can access this screener to see if they qualify for the test if you make this accessible. They can also change or cancel their session times or move their session times. Okay. Disable scheduling. This is really if you wanted to do something like pre-qualify people for a focus group and then call them back to make sure they are who they say they are or if you just want to update your database, right? You can disable scheduling so that the person does not have to schedule for a specific session. Allow anonymous access creates a static URL that individuals can share with their friends or you can post to a Facebook page or your website or advertise on the web, etc. using this static URL. 
right? And and I, I give this as an example. My wife hangs out with a lot of other moms who have kids that are four, six, or eight years old, right? And so if you're doing a test with moms with kids, it's a good way to say, hey, share this link with your friends and have them come in for a test, right? And so you can do that in general. That's a good way to expand your database. Okay. You have a preferred time and date format. This is pulled from your admin default settings as well. You have subject exclusion settings. Most consumer packaged goods companies leave the exclude subjects who have participated blank, which means they can participate as often as they want. If you put days in here, uh, if you're one of our testing agency clients, you might put days in here, 90 days, which is typical past three month participation. Okay. Exclude subjects called in the last. This is how often you can basically call or email people. We do have a one hour minimum on here. We don't want to spam participants and have them start complaining about the volume of email that they're getting from Red Jade. That would affect all of our users. So we limited this to one hour at a minimum. Excluding panelists would exclude anyone who exists as a member of a panel. Okay. Um, exclude anonymous dependents. Chris, can you explain exclude anonymous dependents? Sorry. Yeah, sure. Uh, members that join your database can add children to their household um, and is not required that a child, somebody under the age of 18, that their name is presented therefore making them anonymous. So an anonymous dependent would be a child in your household uh, that you've added and you haven't specified a name or contact information for them. So we just know that you have a child that is 10 years old. Perfect. Um, subject ranking settings, no one really uses these, but if you want people who haven't participated in a long time, you can dial up the prioritized low activity. Um, custom filters. Okay, so you'll see that San Francisco site that I chose limits me to the people who exist in my database as part of the San Francisco location, right? So I have 1,167 people who can possibly attend this test. I can add more filters. So here I can add demographic filters, which will correspond to categories in my database, right? So here what I can do for example, if I want to add demographics, I can say I only want people in this test who have vanilla ice cream most often, right? So I can do that and you'll see I have 1,088 total people in my database who meet that criteria. I have 1,167 people in my San Francisco site who meet that criteria. Total, I have a possibility of reaching 539 people in my database. Okay. So you'll see that here. All right, so that gives you an idea of how many people are possible to reach based on the settings that you specify in your custom filters. Now, if you put in the same box, right, this is an or statement. Okay, so this is, I want to include people who are vanilla ice cream is their flavor most often or have iOS as their phone operating system. Now that doesn't really make sense. So let's look up chocolate. Let's try to at least make this make a little bit of sense here. We'll use vanilla or chocolate as their ice cream flavor most often. And now we have 818 subjects who may qualify for our test, okay? If I add another demographic filter and I say I want iOS, this becomes an and statement, right? Sorry, I hit the wrong button there. So here, now it's an and statement. Now I need people who have vanilla ice cream as their flavor most often or chocolate ice cream as their flavor most often and have iOS as their phone operating system and San Francisco site as their location, okay? So that's how those differ from each other, okay? And you'll see that that number keeps updating. You can copy an existing campaign. The best thing to do here is to scroll down to the bottom and copy the campaign first and then go back and fill out all your information. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. Our next step is going to be to set up our quotas, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and let's say I wanna recruit 120 people and I'll go ahead and click continue. Now you'll see Red Jade, sorry, 240 people. 
So if I put 240 people here, that will limit me for how many people I wanna recruit for my test. Now what I can do is I can add a quota branch and I can search for gender. I know that I have gender in my database, so I can search for gender. That one exists here. And what's going to happen is we're gonna choose gender and then I can choose how many people we have. Now you'll notice by default, it's gonna split that gender 50-50, 50% male, 50% female, right? Now you'll notice these are hard quotas, 120, means that Red Jade will only allow you to have exactly 120 people. So let's open these up a little bit. Let's say I'm willing to have between 110 and 130 males and 110 and 130 females. And then let's explain how this works. So what will happen in Red Jade is let's actually open this, open females up even more. Let's say 150. All right, so what will happen in Red Jade is Regid would actually never allow you to recruit 150 females for this test. Regid would stop you at 130 females because we need at least 110 males in order to meet our quota. So Regid's gonna say, I am not letting you recruit 150 females. I'm stopping you at 130 because you have a limit of 240 total people and I need to at least meet this minimum quota of 110. Okay. Let's go ahead and add a nested quota, right? Now I'm gonna add a new one because I don't have this that exists. And let's call this ice cream usage. And here we'll do heavy, medium, and light. Now here what happens is you'll see because I built a nested quota, it's going to automatically split my quota out by both males and females. Now if this is not something you care about, you can add the quota branch down below and set a completely separate quota branch. Okay? Now I left these split evenly, but you can of course change these as necessary for your test. Okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and click this continue button. Now you'll notice one other thing that happens there. Once we set that quota, right, we have now created a demographic for our test. So I can go back into my project and remember on my participant step, I said I can now select a demographic to automatically assign females to a certain participant code and males to a certain participant code. So now when a female comes in, they'll automatically be assigned to the next 2000 series participant code, while a male will automatically be assigned to the 1001 participant code. Okay. And that's just an automated process that you can set up. So let's go ahead and create our recruiting screener here. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna add a couple of simple questions. Let's start with a basic single select question and just say, are you available for testing today between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m.? Right, something nice and simple. And we can say yes, we can say no. We can eliminate our other answer choices here. And now if I want to, I can scroll down and I can add a termination scenario. And I can say, I do not want somebody who is not available for testing. So if they say no, I'm gonna terminate them from the test. I'm gonna add another page, another, sorry, another question. And you'll see in my basic questions library, I have this demographic question. I'm gonna click the plus button. And from here, I can add the quotas that I set up in the previous step. So both of those quotas were available to me. And here I might say, please specify your gender below. And from here, you'll see because I added that from this demographic question, the demographic assignments are already made for me automatically. I don't have to go back and hand enter those demographics. Now I'm gonna go ahead. I know in my library, I have a frequency question. I believe I do, frequency. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in this frequency question. And you'll notice that this is frequency of consumption. Now I'm not gonna change this because watching me type is boring at best right, embarrassing for me at worst. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to add these assignments by hand. 
So I'm going to say this is ice cream usage, and I want a heavy user, right, to be somebody who has ice cream daily every two to three weeks or weekly. I'm going to consider that to be a heavy user. I'm going to add another assignment for ice cream usage, medium users, and I'm going to have this one, this person, be somebody who has ice cream monthly or every two to three months, sorry, every two to three weeks or monthly. And I'm going to add my last assignment for ice cream usage, and we'll have our light users. And this will be somebody who has ice cream every two to three months or every six months. Now you'll notice I still have this less than once every six months available to me. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a termination scenario and we'll make it so that the person doesn't have ice cream at least once every six months they'll be terminated okay. now i've gone ahead and made a really simple screener here but you get the idea of how you can build this now this is actually for our consumer packaged goods clients this is actually a fairly typical screener right fairly simple easy flowing um, here so let's go ahead and click save and close and now let's click finished and you'll see our last step is it's going to give us a summary of our recruiting right now, I'm going to go ahead and click Begin Recruiting, and you'll see a couple of things here. One is, you'll see I have a list of candidates who are available for my test. If I click on Possible Subjects, this is going to show me all of my possible subjects for my test here. Okay. Um, you'll also see I can create an email blast. Now, from here, I'm going to click Create, and I'm just going to copy my last email blast here. Now, what I'm going to do is decide how many people I want to send this email blast to. Now, again, I would suggest not blasting everyone. You want to see kind of what your feedback is. So maybe I send it to 400 people, and I am going to send it, today is the 23rd, and I'm going to send it in the past, which means that this email will automatically go out as soon as I finish, right? Now, I don't want to send 400 of them because there's no need to. I'll send four. And you can see this qualify URL must be included. RegAid will warn you if it doesn't include it, actually, right? And you can include another of, a number of other dynamic content here. Retry attempts will send retries to the people as many times as you specify, also as often as you specify here as well. So we click submit, and now these, this email will go out um, at the five-minute interval here. So it'll go out in another minute or so. Scripts and screens pulls from your recruiting settings information automatically for each new test. Now, I would recommend that you spend some time in your recruiting settings area setting things up that I'm about to show you so that you don't end up spending a bunch of time on each test. You really want to, quote unquote, set it and forget it, right? Set it up once really well and then you don't have to worry about it on every single recruit that you do. So here's in this recruiting settings, I can change these defaults and they will automatically show up on these screens, right? Now, if you're recruiting via email, you're clearly not gonna see all of these screens. They're not gonna have a call introduction, right? You're not gonna have an online confirmation, which is what happens if you set up a packing slip or email-based test, you will, and the person agrees, they will get this text here, okay? Session reminders are automated reminder emails. They go out reminding someone to come to their session time, right? And you can schedule those 24 hours before a session, one hour before a session. What we typically recommend is if you're using employees, set a reminder for 15 or 30 minutes before. If you're using external people, you might send a reminder 24 hours and one hour before. Right, so really it depends on, on who you want to send to and when you want to send it, but you can set up those reminder emails here. Confirmation emails um, are set up based on somebody's status. So if somebody is scheduled, right, if their subject status is scheduled, you may want to send an email that includes a calendar event attachment so that they automatically have a calendar event on their calendar and they remember to come to the test, right? Reports are going to give you by session reports of who's recruited, who's coming, their email address, their phone number in case you need to reach out to them, et cetera, here as well. Okay. 
So here's this as well. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's go ahead and recruit somebody here. Um, this would be more similar to our call loop, but I do want to show you what happens here. So let's go ahead. I'm going to click interview. And I forgot to opt them in. Okay. We'll opt them in so they want to participate. I have consent turned on, which is really a GDPR rule, uh, but you can choose to have that turned on or not. Are you available for testing today? We'll say yes, they're available. Now, again, I'm flowing through the call loop. So just note that the subject in an email would not see all of this information over here, right? So they wouldn't see all of this. Um, we'll go ahead and specify our gender, male. Now, gender I have that exists in my database. So I do not have to ask the question again if I don't want to. I really recommend that people think about that question in their database and how many people are covered if they don't include the question. Okay. So what I mean by that is in recruiting, if I look at my subjects, my sorry, my categories here, and I look at gender, what percent of people could I possibly not have gender on? So I have gender on almost everybody in my database. I'm missing it for about 100 people. So I still may want to ask it. Right? And what's cool is you can actually sync those demographics at the end and update your database as well. Okay? And let's say I eat ice cream every two to three weeks. I click next. I qualify for this test. So I get to choose one of the available session times here. Right? So I'll go ahead and choose an available session time. And now let's show how this flows through to testing. Okay? So let's imagine it's day of testing. You're going to, from your RegAid homepage, all right, so I'll go to my RegAid homepage. You're going to go, the person who's conducting the test is going to click on collection, right? They're ready to collect data. They're going to click on collection. And I did assisted check-in, which means I want the person to come up to me and say, hey, I'm here for testing, right? It would help if I launch my test here really quickly. Let's launch. Okay. That's a warning saying I only recruited one person. You need 100 for each one. So now let's go ahead and go to check-in. Right? And you'll see that I have my one person here, Alton, available for testing. Right. So I scroll over the top of Alton. I click check-in. Now you'll notice that because Alton is male, Alton is automatically assigned the first ID number that is available to me in the male participant codes because I set it up to assign participant codes based on the demographic gender. Okay, so you can see I can easily do that here. I choose 1001. If I switch him to female, you'll notice that it switches the participant code. Okay, so those are connected and automatically linked. That's going to balance my first serve order automatically for me by gender. Now, by chance, it might match. But this ensures that your position-based order is equal between males and females in this case. Okay, And we click Submit for those testing agencies on the phone. I know that that can be something that's very key to you as you go through this process, right? When you're conducting testing on behalf of a third-party client, right? So this person can now test. So if I were to go to my surveys, put in 1001, Right. And now they can begin their survey process. Here's the study participant agreement. Right. Here's the sample code, so on and so forth. They can fill out their survey. Now I kept the survey short. But now what happens and this is the last step here. Now what happens is if I go into my live results for this test, you'll also notice. I wiped out my cookie. You'll also notice that in the results section, I have the ability to filter data by ice cream usage, gender, serving position, which event I have set up, et cetera. So that ties together all of the information that I have collected and lets me run my data. So we'll just do males since that's all I have. If I choose male and click save, You'll see that I have one person who's a male, my filter is turned on for male, and there's my data set. 
With that, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.